Do you have any idea what this is? I don't. That's because there are estimated to be about 3 million different species of mushrooms on Earth. For all I know, this could be a brand new species never before discovered by science. Okay, that's not very likely at all. Out of those millions of species that are estimated to be on Earth, only about 14,000 or so have actually been discovered and named by science. And out of those, only about a dozen or so have passed the insanely high bar to be considered functional mushrooms. A functional mushroom is defined as a mushroom that is used for a specific benefit. They could be gourmet mushrooms that actually have other medicinal properties or just purely medicinal mushrooms that would not be fit for the dinner table. Overall, only about 0.0004% of all mushrooms are considered to be functional. Either way you slice it, that is an exceedingly exclusive club. One way to think about it, in order to be part of this exclusive club, each one of these special mushrooms had to beat out millions of others. Even more exclusive, with Within that small team of a dozen or so functional mushrooms, there are five that are really the cream of the crop. Some of these mushrooms have been involved in hundreds of studies, have been revered for thousands of years, and are now being used by millions of people all over the world. In this video, we're gonna review each of these five super mushrooms. We're gonna cover how they grow, what makes them special, and most importantly, what they might be able to do for you. Let's jump into it. Mushrooms have been used for thousands of years. That's something you'll often hear when learning about functional mushrooms. It's not true for all functional mushrooms, but it is certainly true for the mushroom of immortality, also known as reishi. This mushroom has stood the test of time as one of nature's most powerful healers. Now it's bitter to the taste and it's woody, so it's certainly not lauded for its culinary traits. But you can't blame it for being brutally bitter because that's where many of the benefits come from. The bitterness comes from powerful compounds within the mushroom, specifically triterpenoids known as ganoderic acids. These compounds are unique to reishi and they're the reason why this mushroom has an effect for sleep and for relaxation and why it has an overall calming effect. In the literature, this is defined as having a hypnotic effect, but in reality, the effects are a little more subtle than that. This mushroom helps when used consistently over time to help with sleep instead of acting acutely. Now, reishi is also no slouch when it comes to immune support, which is really the hallmark of all functional mushrooms. That's because it's also packed with fungal beta-glucans. Finally, this mushroom is also used to help combat seasonal allergies, which is likely due to the immune balancing or the immunomodulating effects of the beta-glucans within the reishi mushroom. The Latin name again for this is Ganoderma lucidum. Ganoderma is Latin for shiny skin, with gano meaning shiny, referring to this varnished surface, and derma referring to skin. It's also sometimes called the varnished conch because of its shiny appearance. This one's a little bit dull, but sometimes they can really look varnished. When it grows, it starts off its life as little finger-like projections, which eventually will grow out into dinner plate sized conchs, kind of like this one here. Now, reishi is a polypore, so if you flip it over, and look at the bottom, you'll see that it has pores instead of gills, and these pores produce billions and billions of spores. Now, the amount of spores that the reishi fruiting body can produce is truly remarkable. When you see reishi mushroom growing on a farm, it's not uncommon to see an inch or so of the spores sitting on top of the mushroom. Reishi grows naturally on hardwood logs. When cultivated, logs are inoculated with the reishi culture, and then they are buried slightly underground to kind of help retain moisture. Reishi takes a long time to grow, like upwards of nine months. Now, unlike many other mushrooms that prefer cool conditions, reishi actually loves the heat. The very best time for reishi to grow is over the summer months. Now, as mentioned earlier, reishi produces a ton of spores. Luckily, however, the spores happen to contain lots of really powerful compounds, just like the fruiting body. These spores can be harvested and extracted and used in supplements, and the most beneficial reishi supplements are gonna contain dual extracted versions of both the spores and the fruiting body. And that's the reason why in the Fresh Cap reishi products, we do include both the spores and the fruiting body together. 
As mentioned earlier, all functional mushrooms are known for their ability to support our immune systems. But there is one mushroom that stands above the rest, and that is turkey tail. This common mushroom has some pretty uncommon benefits, so although you might be inclined to pass by it in the forest if you see it there, you might not want to pass by it in the supplement aisle. Turkey tail is absolutely packed with immune supporting beta glucans, and honestly I feel like I'm repeating myself when I talk about beta glucans so much, but they really are that critical, especially when we're talking about functional mushrooms. Again, beta glucans are compounds found in the fruiting bodies of functional mushrooms with an unusually high concentration in turkey tail. These compounds are able to interact with and support our immune system. They do this through the process of immunomodulation. This basically means that if our immune system is underperforming, beta glucans can help kick it into gear. But if our immune system is overactive, they can help to cool that response. There is a Goldilocks zone for our immune system and turkey tail helps us get there. Regular intake of turkey tail is kind of like taking your immune system to the gym, prepping it to be able to take down whatever gets in your way. It might come as no surprise that turkey tail looks like, well, a turkey's tail. Now, the scientific name is Tremedes versicolor, which is Latin, with Tremedes meaning the thin one, and versicolor meaning many colors. Now, turkey tail is also a polypore, kind of like reishi, so on the bottom of it, there are pores instead of gills. Turkey tail grows naturally, again, it's pretty common, and you'll find it on hardwood logs. So there is a really good chance that if you've ever gone for a walk in the woods, you've seen turkey tail growing, or at least a close cousin or close relative of Tremedes versicolor. It can also be cultivated relatively easily. Really, this mushroom just wants to grow. Once harvested, it can be made into a tea, which is done by simply simmering it in hot water. Or it can be powdered, extracted, and turned into an easy to use supplement. It's worth it to mention that fungal beta glucans are water soluble compounds, so hot water extracts of turkey tail are the best way to extract the benefits, which is why people will make a tea or do a hot water extract that again gets turned into a powder and put into a supplement. Functional mushrooms aren't just for us humans either. Turkey tail is one of the most popular mushrooms for use in dogs. In fact, we noticed pretty early on in Fresh Cap that a lot of people were buying turkey tail mushroom powder for their dogs, so we ended up creating shroomies, which is a chew that's got turkey tail in there and is just for dogs. Now imagine you're a ghost moth, living your life high in the Tibetan plateau. You're having a pretty good day, but all of a sudden you start to feel a little weird. Next thing you know, a mushroom sprouts from your head and you die. Now luckily, the same mushroom doesn't have such a dramatic effect on humans, killing you and turning you into a zombie. In fact, it's actually known to do the opposite. It helps with energy, with endurance, and with athletic performance. Cordyceps contains something called cordycepin, which is similar to a mall molecule that's endogenous to the body called adenosine. Adenosine is a molecule that we humans use to make cellular energy. It is so close, in fact, that cordycepin can actually take part in a number of chemical reactions inside of the body. And that's why cordyceps is often used for energy and endurance. Interestingly, cordyceps is also a true adaptogen. That's a term that gets tossed around a lot, but it's actually a real scientific term. An adaptogen is defined as a natural substance which helps the body adapt to stress and has a normalizing effect on bodily processes. Even though people call all functional mushrooms adaptogens, cordyceps is really the only proven one, and reishi is considered a probable adaptogen. Now, cordyceps is not your typical cap and stem mushroom. Instead, it grows as a golden yellow club that kind of looks like a Cheeto. In the wild, cordyceps militaris really does grow on bugs. But luckily, cultivators have figured out how to grow this mushroom without the use of bugs. Cordyceps grown for supplementation are instead grown on beds of soy and rice. The fruiting bodies are pretty tough to grow, but they can be grown in cooler temperatures and will grow in these really dense clusters of mushrooms. Growing these mushrooms slowly and in the cold will help to increase that level of cordycepin, which again is the active compound in this mushroom. The whole fruiting body of the mushroom can then be harvested and processed into powders. When talking about cordyceps for supplementation, there is a distinction that you need to know. There's cordyceps militaris, which again is the one that can be cultivated, and since it can be cultivated, it's relatively economical to produce and it can be used for supplementation. But then there's Cordyceps sinensis, which has historically been used, but it has to be harvested in the wild. It only grows high in the Tibetan plateau and because of all this, it's extremely expensive. And when I say expensive, it's like 20,000 US dollars per kilogram. 
which makes it pretty infeasible to use that as a supplement. But again, Cordyceps militaris can be cultivated, and luckily it has an even higher concentration of Cordycepin than the wild-grown Cordyceps sinensis, which makes it a better candidate overall. It looks kind of like a lump of coal, it's parasitic to trees, and technically it's not even a mushroom. So why in the heck would we include this sterile conch in the list of the world's most powerful mushrooms? Although it's not the prettiest mushroom, wild-crafted chaga is a powerful antioxidant. It's packed with immune-supporting beta-glucans and a hefty dose of powerful triterpenoids. It's even sometimes referred to as the king of functional mushrooms. So let's take a deeper look at this incredible mushroom to understand why it reigns supreme. This mushroom is actually made up of two things, chaga mycelium and birchwood. Because of its relationship to birch, wild-harvested chaga contains both betulin and betulinic acid. Betulina pubescens is the scientific name for birch, which is why it gets the name betulin and betulinic acid. Now, these unique compounds are what are responsible for many of the amazing benefits of chaga. This includes potent antiviral and anti-inflammatory properties. And that's why it's critical for chaga to be wild harvested. Chaga mycelium can be grown in a lab. I know it sounds weird, but it does happen. That doesn't have the benefit of birch and will be lacking these crucial compounds. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with chaga is that it does need to be dual extracted. Hot water for the beta-glucans and alcohol for the triterpenoids. Now, you might have heard of chaga as a coffee replacement, and chaga does have a bit of a history as a coffee replacement, specifically in Finland around the time of World War II. Things like coffee and sugar became hard to get, but luckily chaga, which grows on birch trees, was absolutely abundant in the large birch forests there. Now, chaga can be ground up and brewed very similarly to coffee, although it does need to be extracted a lot longer. It's dark and it's warm and it actually tastes pretty good. But chaga has no caffeine, which makes it a pretty poor replacement for coffee. Plus, simply simmering the chaga in hot water would mean you'd miss out on many of the benefits that do require alcohol extraction. Now, I love coffee, so instead of using chaga as a replacement, I prefer to just add it to my coffee. In my opinion, both coffee and mushrooms are awesome in their own way. Next up is lion's mane. It's found in instant coffee mixes, granola bars, energy drinks. I've even seen it as a main active ingredient in pancake mix. This humble mushroom has gone from relative obscurity to being one of the most popular nootropics in the world. And for good reason. It contains unique compounds not found anywhere else in nature that have been studied for their ability to improve cognition, focus, and mood. So why are so many people adding this mushroom into their coffee as a way to get their brain firing on all cylinders? It comes down to two compounds, heresinones and aranacines. These two compounds, which again are only found in lion's mane, promote the growth of something called nerve growth factor and can cross the blood-brain barrier. Nerve growth factor, often abbreviated just as NGF, is something that is produced naturally by your body for the purpose of protecting and helping to grow nerves including the neurons in your brain. Now, the only problem is that NGF is actually too big of a molecule to cross the blood-brain barrier. And that's where lion's mane comes in. Paracinones and aranacines are smaller molecules, small enough to cross into the brain, cross that blood-brain barrier, and help produce nerve growth factor where you might need it the most. Now, lion's mane is not just used for improving focus and memory. There was one study done to see if using lion's mane could help to improve mood. In a four-week study that was done with 30 postmenopausal women, scientists found that cookies made with lion's mane won out over the placebo cookies in terms of helping with irritability and with anxiety. Also, lion's mane, like all functional mushrooms, contains relatively high levels of fungal beta-glucan. So this mushroom is also used for supporting the immune system. Combine that with the other benefits and you can start to understand why this mushroom is so darn popular. The other thing to note is that lion's mane is one of the hardest working mushrooms around. It actually has two jobs. See, most functional mushrooms that we talked about are too bitter and too woody to be enjoyed as a gourmet mushroom. But lion's mane is a different story. It's both a powerful functional mushroom and a delicious gourmet mushroom. Many liken the taste to seafood and will try to use it as like a crab replacement. The texture is pretty meaty 
and if you cook it in lots of butter and use your imagination, then I would agree. No matter how you slice it, the flavor, the texture, and the functional benefit of this mushroom put it at the very top of the list for chefs and biohackers alike. If you want to dive deeper into any of these mushrooms, we do have full guides on our website. Just click the links in the description below and you can read all about them. Also, we have a full ebook that covers all of these mushrooms, plus all sorts of other stuff like extraction, and it really dives deep into it. And you can get that for free right now. Just click the link in the description. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something in this video and we'll see you in the next one.